Good morning, Eagles. Today is Tuesday, June 21st. I'm Ian, not Devin Fisher, and neither are you. And here are your announcements. As you head into the summer, please be aware of how much single-use plastic you use. Mrs. Penner's Grade 10 Aspire class has completed, or sorry, yeah, has completed the bulletin boards in the B hallway on second floor, and they invite you to come and take a look at the photographs and displays. Soon, the federal government of Canada will be, pla <laughs> will be placing a ban on the sale, manufacturing, and exporting and importing of plastic bags, straws, stir sticks, and cutlery. Are you ready to replace your plastics? Our final display is about a newly discovered type of pollution from our clothing. And so, here's a video about microplastics. The only thing more weird than making monsters and having them crawl out of washing machines is learning that they actually exist. The monsters? They represent the microscopic killer pieces of fiber that get released into the water every single time we do our laundry. Polyester, nylon, spandex, it's everywhere in all of our clothes. Since 40% of these microfibers can't be filtered out by some of the top wastewater treatment centers in the country, we're basically drinking our plastic laundry every single day. We didn't have many resources at our disposal to create these images, just passionate volunteers that we gathered with the help of Facebook and Instagram Live. Complete strangers that offered to help, like Carrie, who organized a clothing drive, and Lee, a costume designer who helped us figure out what to do with the clothing so that we could create our monsters using nothing more than cardboard and glue. And after a full week of putting these different parts of our creature together, we spent two sleepless nights carting all the pieces that we had cobbled together down to a student laundromat, hoping that it would all just work out. We laid out lines and lines of fishing wire to get our monsters hanging in the perfect position and used whatever gear the volunteers had brought and crossed our fingers, hoping that we would be able to capture a shot that could captivate the world. In parallel to all of this, three students, Lola, Jamie, and Carter, got together to work on an actual solution. They managed to create a simple bag, a fiber filter capable of capturing almost 80% of the toxic microfibers directly at the source that anyone could buy. Which leaves us with just one question. Which washing machine brand will join us in the fight? Because right now, none of them have a solution. Oh, and one more thing, guys. For all of you who made it this far, we have a giveaway for you. The link is in the description below. There will be a senior boys football meeting today at 1130 in room 229. And now we're going out to Hello Eagles, I just wanted to give an attention to the grade 12s graduating this year. This is a reminder similar to the one made last week, but the last day of school is fast approaching as is our commencement ceremony. Commencement will take place at the Elmer Community Center on June 23rd. This is also the final day of school for those not attending credit recovery days, and the ceremony will start at 7 p.m. though doors will open around 6. Graduates are expected to be there at 6.30 by the latest, and grad captain gowns ordered previously will be handed out when said graduate arrives at the community center. Additionally, you get to keep the pre-ordered grad caps and gowns. Um, so that was a common question we've had. Um, so don't worry about the caps and gowns until then. Um, a couple months back, you or a close relative will have filled out a Google form explaining your future pathway. That information is put, put to very good use, and if you are interested in editing anything, please talk to Rhonda Simon in the office. Additionally, a Google form, the Google form had a question about um, how many seats um, you needed for friends and family. The number is very important as you cannot bring any more guests as we've capped at 1,000 people. If you've forgotten the number you inputted, you can visit Rhonda again in the main office for more information or with any additional questions. This year, Mr. Green from the tech department will be the commencement photographer, so if you wish to throw your cap, we would hope that you wait until the graduates can regroup outside and toss it then, as both the students and Mr. Green will be better pre prepared to capture the moment. So what is actually happening? As of right now, there will be an introduction with key speakers, then each graduate will be called up in alphabetical order to receive their diploma and have their summary read. This is also when scholarships will be presented. There will be a speech by this year's valedictorian followed by a conclusion. After the ceremony, refreshments will be served. Additionally, the ceremony should last a couple hours, two and a half to three most likely. Um, and again, if you have any questions, please find me or Ms. Rhonda Simon. Now back inside. 
Now we have an announcement for National Indigenous Peoples Day by Catherine Corliss. Happy National Indigenous Day to our Indigenous community at East Elgin. I hope you're all having a great morning so far and remember to take the time today to recognize and celebrate your unique heritage. I would also like to say a huge thank you to Miss Van Heron who's put so much time and effort into the FNMI team. You're amazing and one of the best teachers I have ever met at East Elgin. Our group is going to miss you and we wish you all the best luck at Saunders in the fall. Now back inside. Here's the next episode of Where Eagles Fly. I graduated in 2009. Um, so I took college level courses that helped me prepare for um, continuing education. I took police foundations and social work at Panjo College doing three years of studies and then I took one year of university credits in Alberta where I attended Lakeland College um, which also had ties into the social work path. I work as a security guard full time, but I also volunteer full time um, running a nonprofit organization called Five When I Pursue. I'm the co founder of Five When I Pursue. Um, Five When I Pursue is a nonprofit organization here in London that supports those facing homelessness and extreme poverty. We go in the community and we offer um, friendship, we offer care packages, friendship, we offer care packages, we offer survival gear um, and hot meals. One of my fondest memories of being at East Elgin um, is not only the teachers that were there for us and you know made it a good place to be and, and fun overall, but also going to OFSA in senior women's basketball. One of my greatest accomplishments to date would be um, starting Five When I Pursued and following through with it. We're now at year five and it's been volunteer time and I look forward to the day where I can make it a career. Um, we've recently obtained a outreach ban and just re received our first funding to further our support programs so that's really exciting to see after committing to five years of you know helping others in the community that it's starting to pay off. My experience is playing varsity basketball um, and playing in Alberta. There's definitely different experiences um, from Ontario to Alberta. One being the weather, um, two being the distance of travel when you're at Alberta every single weekend you are gone to games because they are eight to ten hour bus rides away. So getting comfortable and getting into the routine of going to school all week and having basketball practice all week and every weekend being gone. A way to play games was interesting but taught me a lot about um, time management and now being able to um, run a nonprofit organization, have a full-time job, have a family and, and try to juggle a social life. Um, I learned a lot from being a post-secondary varsity basketball player but also looking to get more involved in their community is do it. Um, we need you. Our children need you. If we don't step up and fill the gaps of the sports, the, the church programs, the nonprofit organizations, the charities, all those things that make community what it is, um, we're going to lose a lot of those opportunities and a lot of those programs. A lot of the programs that we've been able to attend and, and spend our free time at, uh, whether it be soccer, or basketball, or um, free meals on the weekend, or supporting families at food banks who don't have enough in their cupboards. If our generations are the ones to step up and continue those programs, we're gonna lose them, um, and then we're gonna lose community members who need our support. So I think it's really important that we fill that gap and we be mindful. Uh, without us, there won't be a community. Um, other advice would be go do it. It gives you life experience. Advice would be go do it. It gives you life experience. It helps you understand what you want to do for a career. 
Um, I didn't know what I wanted to do in college or university. I went through with programs that caught my interest and what I learned following is when I volunteered, I learned more in the hands-on aspect than I ever did from a textbook or in class, which helped me understand what I wanted to do for a career. On the process of creating Five and I Pursuit and the rewarding part, uh, it's a long process. It's a, it's a big commitment, but knowing that there was a gap to fill, uh, the process was worth it. Um, the process is definitely your free time, being able to be consistent, being able to be uh, empathetic and, and caring and being able to be resourceful for others who may not have um, what you have. Um, the rewarding part is seeing those who are being supported use the support to change their lives, use the support to better their, their situations and use that support to change the community that they live within. There's a lot more uh, rewarding aspects than, than the tedious part of the process. So I would say if you have an idea, do it, try it, try again and again and keep the conversation going because eventually you will find that person that will support you and see it through. Thank you. Google Drive accounts will become inactive on June 30th for students not returning to EESS. Please consider saving the files you may need. Also, contact forms can be found on the EESS website for grads to complete so EESS can contact you following June 30th if needed. Now we have a Best Buddies update. Hey Best Buddies, so tomorrow we will be bowling at size and you will be demitted during second period at 1030, so make sure you go into your buddy's room when you leave. Lunch will be provided and make sure to bring socks and a positive attitude back inside. And now we are continuing with more Eagles Athletics Awards. Hey, thanks. Awesome. Uh, good morning, East Elgin. Just uh, a, a general kind of congratulations and thank you before we get going and I turn it over to, to Gabba. Um, everyone who participated in athletics this year, I just wanted to say congratulations on an amazing year. And I also wanted to extend a huge thank you to our coaches. Um, without them, this wouldn't have been possible. And this year was certainly uh, pretty trying at times to wade through, but they stepped up went above and beyond and did some amazing things for kids. So the highlight of my year certainly was seeing athletics back. And uh, it was great to see so many of you guys in your achievements on the field, uh, in the gymnasium. It was great. Uh, I'm going to give out one award, and then, like I said, I'm going to turn it over to Gabba. Um, I'm here to present this award to three people. This is called the Colin Hood Award, and it's given out annually to one graduating male, one graduating female, and one coach in every school across the province. Uh, throughout their school career, whether it is as an athlete or a coach, we're going to recognize its standing achievement that they've contributed to their school and athletics at their school. So I'd like to start off by um, congratulating our female winner, um, Caitlin Prescator, and I'd like to congratulate Jackson Groves. And finally, I'd like to congratulate Mr. Black, who is our uh, staff winner this year. So congratulations to everyone. I will turn it over to Gabba. Thank you, Nanis. Okay, so the first award today is uh, the Shackleton Landscaping Award presented to the most coachable male and female athletes. So the male athlete is our very own Hayden Kebbell. And the female athlete is Alexa Lowen. Okay. So our next award is the Leader of the Year Award, presented to the male and female who displays outstanding leadership qualities in school and on the field. Uh, this year's male recipient is Jackson Groves. And our female winner, and our female winner is Caitlin Prescott. 
Okay, so the third award is going to be the Judy Wright Citizenship Award, presented to a graduating female athlete who has demonstrated a high academic standing, leadership, dedication to athletics, and has been involved in volunteer work within her community. This year's winner is Meg McCollum. And our last award for today is the Stu Phoenix Award. It's presented to the male and female athlete for dedication, determination, desire, and involvement towards athletics. It's donated by Mr. Stu Phoenix, a former science department head and coach at East Elgin. Uh, this year's winner, uh, winners are Mitchell Fair and Meg McCollum. And just a heads up for all the winners from uh, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. The plaques aren't in yet, but uh, they've been ordered, so they'll come in soon, and we'll deliver them to you in class. Now back inside. That is all your announcements for today, Eagle. Great news. Read that. All right. Thanks. All right. Have a good <laughs> sleep. You too. <laughs> Breaking news! Attention all teens interested in free food. The Elmer Library is looking for you. All you have to do is visit the Elmer Library over the summer and sign up for a teen book bingo and or loot box to get a free food voucher from the local, from the local McDonald's or Domino's. Only while supplies last, visit or call the Elmer Library for more information. That's all your announcements for today, Eagles. Have a great day, and now stand for the National Anthem. Thank you. 